and over here. You see, in the formula bar also, we can use absolute referencing and lock it, lock things in place. Okay. All right. So now let's see uh, one more way of doing this. See, don't get confused. True is what? When you're looking for an approximate match. False is when you're going with an exact match. I want the order number here to match exactly with the order number present in my database. Right. Only when there is a perfect match between the order numbers, I need to get the name of the customer and the profit corresponding to that transaction. That is why we are going with false because we are looking for data that exactly matches what we are searching for over here. Is it clear, Avinash? I will give you an example with approximate match also, but we will do that later. First, let's understand exact match thoroughly. Then we'll go to approximate match. Exact match meaning false should be the argument or you could give zero as the argument. Both mean false. And what are we essentially telling is pull back the value only when what we are searching for exactly matches the data in the column. Okay, in the um, uh, table array where we are trying to look for the data. Rajshekar, yes. Absolute referencing we are giving only for the table array because this is fixed. At any given point of time in this array, I am supposed to search for the value. Why am I not using um, absolute reference for this particular search thing? Here, why did I not use absolute reference? I left it as relative because I want to be able to copy it down. Did you get it, Rajshikar? I want to be able to copy it down because when I move down, I need uh, Excel to take the second cell, B4. And when I'm searching for this customer, it has to reference B5. When, when I come here, it has to reference B6 and bring me the customer for a name of corresponding to this order ID. So this I'm not locking in place. This is relative. Okay, but the range where we are searching for it, that is fixed. Okay, so now, yeah, so we, we are doing exact match. Let's, I think, continue with the same example and look at expanding data, how it works with expanding data. Yeah, Mohan Raj, you can use it even in the insert function box. Even over here, you can use absolute referencing. You can do that. Okay. So, so far, we are referencing back to this array by basically selecting the whole thing, isn't it? I had to select this, then go here, then go down and select the entire thing. And then, okay, fine. I'm, I'm using it back there. Every time if you have to do this, it might be a little difficult, a tedious task. So what we can do and what we should do is give a name to the range. Name the range. Name the range. Generally, when you use named ranges, it makes life very easy for us. When we are writing formula, it becomes very easy when we use named ranges. So what does it mean to give a name to the range? All right, naming a range. First, I will select this range, which is my table array, the complete list of transactions. And then after selecting the data, when we go up here, okay, to the name box, see, this is our formula bar. We have the function uh, icon from where we can insert a function. And before that, completely towards the left side over here, you will see A2. This is the cell that is highlighted, A2. This is called name box. Okay, this is name box where we can go ahead and, and give a name to our range. So I will call this superstore and underscore data. So it will not accept spaces. If you would like to use two words, then you must, if you'd like to use two words, you must uh, put something in between them like underscore or a hyphen mark. Some way you have to link the two words. Spaces are not allowed in the name. Okay. 
So I'm using the name as superstore underscore data, the name that I have given to this range. How does this make my life easy? Let me show you. Now, when I write a lookup function, I need to look up for this value. Where am I supposed to look up for it? In that range of data, right? Which is our table array. But we have given a name to that range. So now if I simply press down the F3 key, okay, if we press down F3 function key, F3, it will give us the list of all the named ranges that we might have created. Okay, here is one of the named range that I created, superstore data, which is referencing to the complete list of orders placed by the customer. So I will select it. Okay, this is what I need to reference. Okay, so did you all understand how it is making life easy for us? We don't have to go back to that sheet. We don't have to select the entire range again and again. We'll specify the name of that range, comma. I need to pull back column number two with an absolute match. Frank is the person who placed this order, 152443. Okay, this is the order. Now let's pull back the profit. So how will I pull back the profit? Equal to V lookup. What am I trying to look for is the order ID. Comma. Now table array, I don't have to go back to that sheet and then select the range because I have already given a name to that range. So I'll press down the F3 key. Once I press down the F3 key, you see here, superstore data is the named range. I'll select it and click on OK. Comma, I'm trying to bring back data from column number three with a exact match. So zero, enter. 297 is the profit. Okay, now let's do this using the formula bar. So let's insert a function. Function is we look up. Look up value is this table array. Uh, here I have to type in. Okay, I remember I'll have to remember the name. So the table array name is superstore data. Okay, superstore data. And then the column I'm trying to bring is column number two with an exact match. It has already brought in the name. There, let's cross check because our data is small. We can cross check, do a visual check. 160325. 160325. Understood? So let, let's practice it one more time. What are we trying to do here now? Lookup function, I'll insert it. I'm looking up for this particular value. Where am I supposed to search for it? I'm supposed to search for it in superstore data, which is my reference data. And I'm trying to pull back column number three, provided there is an exact match. So 241, you can see the sample result. Once I click on done, the data comes. So it was 241. Okay, I hope it's clear. So we can give, by giving a name to the range, it actually helps us to build the formula in a much more easier manner. So we discussed how to do it manually by typing in the function. We discussed how to do it by inserting the function. We discussed how to do it by giving a named range. Okay, now I'll just copy this down. And I'll copy this down by doing a double click on this handle. So we got it for the other customers or other, other orders also. But there is one particular order here for which it's not able to bring back the data. Why is it unable to bring back the data? Because this order ID does not exist here, not available. What is the NA error we had discussed, right? NA means that order ID is not available here with all ones. There is no order. Okay, that is why it's not able to pull back anything because it doesn't exist, not available. So how to handle it in a more elegant manner rather than showing it like an error? How can we make it better, right? How can we make this error look better or give a meaningful uh, statement here? We'll use the if any. So all I need to do is go here to the formula bar and I will wrap this whole thing in the if any function. So I'll just open the bracket. Okay, open the bracket before lookup 
and I will use if any. It will perform this and upon encountering n a scenario, I would like to say the order id is incorrect or not found. Okay, the order id is not found. And then I'll close the bracket and click it. You see? So more elegant way of handling an error rather than simply showing NA and leaving it there. It's, I think, a, a sophisticated way of handling an error. All right. Now, stay here. I hope it's clear to all of you.